players have found different answers and both of them had the right ones coming into the final. But there can only be one champion that can be crowned later on, the champion here for the international championships. And what is really exciting is both of these archetypes are new. They're new and established. Everyone thought going into the event, just like last year, we saw that there was four Yveltal Garbodor variants in the top cut. That was the most expected and promising deck at the time. But these two players have demonstrated that there are new inclusions that have changed at the metagame and they've broken the meta. Okay, just look into these faces. They are totally concentrated. They can't wait. They have prepared all week long, all weekend long for this very moment. And here it is. Now they just need to concentrate one more time. The cards need to cooperate also, of course. And there we go. Lift off. Handshake. Genesec. GX. EX. I'm sorry for Zachary. And a Wimpart for Todd. So it looks like Zachary has drawn for turn. And he will be kicking off Todd just reminding himself <laughs> what that Genesec EX does. It does have the drive change ability, which could allow Zachary to conserve some tools. Even though it is a chunky retreat cost Pokemon, we do know, of course, Zachary uses that type null and Sil Valley GX ability, the gyro unit, to maybe push that out of the active in opening turns. So looking at the prize cards there, nothing too painful. And uh, we do see that Zachary going to do his opening search here with an Ultra Ball. Yeah, it's, not, it's a little bit uh, time ago until we saw uh, Genesect EX making quite a splash there. I think it was the Italian Nationals mm -hmm. where yeah. it caught everyone by surprise. And at the time, of course, everyone knew what Genesect EX was doing. But then it was kind of hiding until this point. <laughs> Here it is back into center stage in the finals. Yeah, it's one of those tech Pokemon. It could be really useful uh, during the game if Zachary is ever going to go for something like a Professor Sycamore when he wants to hold on to his fighting memory as we've already stated this is a big factor in the matchup he plays two copies so trying to use them at the opportune moments may be the key to his victory yeah we've seen that before tapu Lele and a Bridget coming out two type null and a Silla Stila gx on zachary's side looks like a really strong start from him he also has a backup supporter for the following turn and another double colors energy so he's going to be pretty content with his first turn and he is as he's passing it over to todd who has a wimpod active which always can retreat for free during his first turn now todd we know is playing Playing three copies of the there Bridget, so the number one thing to do for him is as he's pulling up his sleeves, Bridget. And it's actually really important in this matchup because, of course, there's another one hit KO o option that Zachary has available to him, and that's via the GX attack, the Rebel GX from the Sil Valley GX, that can also take one hit KOs if Tord is not careful with his own bench. So even though he had a Tapu Lele GX in his hand, this is already very beneficial for him to have the physical copy of Bridget straight off the bat. Yeah, and while pl uh, players are checking out their deck, we want to know what is in their prize cards. And looking on Todd's side, we can see a Zora and also a Zorak from the Breakthrough expansion. You can see them here at the top of your screen. And on the left side for Zachary, a couple of Metal Energy and also a Silvalli GX. Todd is looking at a Tapu Koko currently at the top of his list of cards that he wants to grab. I think he'll also be looking for more than likely Zoruas as well, of course. So important to establish your Zoroark GXs in his list because once he gets that trade online, he just gets so much more hand advantage. And that has been the way we keep seeing him win consistently on stream over the course of this entire weekend. Both him and a bunch of other of his teammates piloting this archetype to great success. And really, it's simply down to the fact that they can draw into and access maybe 17 cards in certain <laughs> turns it's just ridiculous really it's just amazing what this ability does for a player not only early on of course you can have explosive starts with it but you get also kind of immune to an end for coming from your opponent because you can always trade in whatever cards you are drawing into and that is especially worth uh, for Todd because he's going to be picking up uh, prizes early that's what he's trying to accomplish with the Golasipod GX and later on he can always rely on Zorak GX so as we see Todd shuffling up looks like he went for one Tapu Koko as well as two of those Zoruas he does have a second Wimpod currently in his hand, so I imagine we'll see a Wimp out from the Wimpod. It is his first turn, of course, so he can freely move his Wimpod and maybe going into the Tapu Koko if possible, seeing so it has a nice free retreat cost. And uh, he also has a double colors energy to boot, so he's also going to get himself a flying flip on the board, it looks like. Yeah, that's not too bad. So uh, even 100 damage dispersed on uh, Zachary's field there. There we go. <laughs> there is the flying flip coming <laughs> from uh, Tord's side, and now Zachary will try to find. Uh, uh, ideally, a Silvalli Jax, giving him the uh, option to always freely retreat his basic Pokemon. Tapu Koko is actually a really important attacker in this matchup. Wow, this is a very interesting Ultra Ball from Zachary. He's not content with the end here, it looks like. He's going to just go ahead and guarantee himself the Silvalli GX that he's going to evolve into. So instead of going for the Max Elixir for the double colors energy attachment, he's playing it safe here. He doesn't want to miss a beat at all because he knows how threatening the Tapu Koko would otherwise be. It does have weakness on Celesteela GX, one of 
his main attacking Pokemon, and on top of that, it also has a free retreat cost. So it's a really awkward Pokemon to knock out for Zachary. So instead, he's saying, I'm not taking any chances. I want to guarantee this Sylve Ally so that I don't miss a beat here. Oh, I like this a lot. And uh, of course, he's also looking for another energy, ideally a basic energy. So that Sylve Ally GX, if he wants to go for that, would be ready to accelerate some more energy. Does he have any basic energy in his discard pile yet? I think he just had to discard the um, Max Elixir. So not quite ideal for him. Maybe he could draw into some more discarding cards. There's a couple of uh, basic metal he's got into another Max Elixir as well. He's but, checking so for that. I think there was nothing in there. Yeah, no way to discard, but he can try and get some more energy on the board via the Max Elixir here. He's looking, he's looking, and he's failing it. It's a big miss from him. It is a big miss, and of course he wants to have these cards hitting on the final uh, match here for you, but you can't choose, of course, when these cards are going to hit. He drew into a couple of basic energy through that end here, so of course that was limiting his odds. So we are going to see him attach the Metal Energy to the Sylvala using that Gyro unit to move out of the Genesect EX. And uh, he can look at his discard pile. There's no Metal Energy in there. So simply a knockout on the Tapu Koko there, taking the first prize of this game. Yeah, he took the first prize there. And now Todd is thinking about what to promote. He has a Zorak GX already in hand, so he can promote confidently one of his Zoruas. What he needs to find now is, of course, the Double Colors. But he also has this one in hand. So uh, the trade abilities can start now. Yep, and that's exactly what we're going to see. It's always great to see as many options in your hand as possible before you make any actions. So that is why so often you'll see Tord at the start of his turn start going for trades because it opens up his options in the hand to make sure he can do the optimal plays. And I have a feeling this is not the last trade ability that we are going to see. There's an Ultra Ball coming down and Mr. Mime being discarded and he's contemplating what second card to discard. Looks like a Guzma for me and I would be expecting another Zorak GX to hit the bench now. Yeah, that is most likely what he's going to be going for potentially wants to grab himself some other options. He already has a Tapu Lele GX in his hand as well uh, for any choice of supporter, seeing as though he has just discarded a Guzma. So there's plenty of options still remaining in, in, in his hand, I should say. And uh, again, just when you keep trading, you just gain more options every single time you get into your evolutions. And that is why Tord's deck works so beautifully. It's just a, uh, amazing. If you watch Tord play and if you watch his turn, you think he's using all those trade abilities. He's already played a supporter. But no, at the end of all these trade abilities, you can still play play a supporter card. So Tord already has the double colors energy in hand, so right now he does have Riotous Beating doing 80 damage at the very least, and uh, he's trying to juggle the fact that he has to watch out for his own bench, because overbenching could open up the Rebel GX. So we are going to see him, instead of putting down the basic Pokemon, he's going to discard the Wimpod with his second trade ability. Looks like he drew into a Bridget, which isn't too helpful to him. He also has another Ultra Ball available, so he could just keep going for even more... Um, evolutions here but he still has his supporter open to him if he wants to just burn this Bridget as well. Yeah, I could imagine that he uh, was going to look for the last remaining Zora in his deck. Remember mm -hmm. there's one in the prize cards. So just to make sure that he can keep the flow of Zora GX going. I think he even has one more in hand and there we go. There's the Zora hitting the bench. And uh, he's also eyeing up the Mewtwo whether or not it's worth it to grab that simply to thin it. He has so many ways he can thin his deck. He can simply access the cards via Bridget or he could just hope to trade it later on in the game. So this is one thing that's just so effective about his list. We keep going on about how powerful trade is in terms of drawing cards, but it's also so emphatic at getting rid of cards you don't need in the matchup. So Tord just going to take the one target from the Bridget there. He has a double color energy in his hand and we are going to see a Riotous beating for what looks like 100 damage here. Yeah, I think he's settling for 100 and at the same time, of course, he knows that if he benches another Pokemon, that would mean that the Rebel G would pick up the one hit KO on the Zorak Jackson. He's saying, no, I, I want you to find at least another choice band or something to increase your damage output if you want to pick up the KO on my Zorak. So passing back over to Zachary, he does have a couple of basic energy in his hand as well as a Professor Sycamore. So this is going to be a really nice turn for him. He gets a double colors onto his bench, Sylvala GX, and puts some metal energy into the discard pile. We have to remember as well that Tord is carrying a couple of enhanced hammers, which is going to be potentially a big swing in this matchup. So Zachary needs to make sure he has multiple attackers set up throughout this game. Yeah, now he finally has two more battle uh, basic energy in his discard pile, <laughs> trying to uh, get that Delmise there into Ooh. the hand and misses yet again. Yeah, it's another big miss from him. He has had a few in the discard pile, a couple in his prize as well, so not 
hugely surprising, but it's always awkward when you're not hitting these. He does play 10 copies of basic metal energy, so it's always not great to start missing these beats, especially when you're in a final. No, you want to hit these, obviously, and now, of course, that the turbo drive, if he elects to go for it, uh, has a target with the metal energy in the discard pile. He could further accelerate, and up till now, he decided to invest into the Silvelli GX, so he figures this is the one Pokemon that is helping me win up this win this matchup. So we are going to see the drive change from the Genesect DX. We said how important it could be. This could make him pick up the Choice Band. He could attach it to the Silvelli GX, seeing as though he didn't get... Um, the fighting memory to take a one-hit KO, but it looks like he wants to hold on to his GX attack. I think he's holding us on for a Golisopod later down the line, and he's going to be content with a Turbo Drive here for 120 damage. Yeah, Turbo Drive here, and two Silvelli GX have now enough energy to keep attacking throughout the next couple of turns, and Todd is now trying to dig for another trade ability, finds another choice band there. He knows he has the KO on the active Silvelli GX, no matter what, unless he loses a couple of Pokemon on his bench during this turn, which is most likely not going to happen. <laughs> At the same time, he's of course also looking uh, to build up a couple of Golisipod GX, which he hasn't found yet. I think the thing that he's definitely looking for this turn, Enhanced Hammers is going to be one of them, but also an Acer Roller this turn could be devastating for him. He could pick up the heavily damaged Zoroark GX, and um, also that would no longer be on the bench as well, so he would be out of range from a Rebel. And we know that he's picked up a Grass Energy in his hand, so even on top of that, if he could find himself a Golisipod, this could be an incredible turn. And there's one more dig, there's one more trade ability here thinking about what card to discard it. It looks like Professor Sycamore here. There we go. Professor Sycamore, can he find it? Ooh, no, it's wow. all about the Tapu Lele. Yeah, he could go for the Tapu Lele to get that Ace Roller. He has found himself the Glycopod, and he already has a Grass Energy in his hand, so he could just be going for the first impression, wiping off the 120 damage that Zachary did on his last turn. The only awkward thing at this moment would be, firstly, there's no Enhanced Hammer to follow this up with for the benched Silver IGX, and also having to play the Tapu Lele rather than having the physical copy of Ace Roller is a little bit awkward because it does open the door for the Rebel GX. Yeah, he's looking through his deck, checking out the Ace Roller. He has only one of them prized, so he, of course, uh, counts again all the important cards that he needs to access, and he's eyeing out that Ace Roller already, denying the prize the, for Zachary there, so the turbo drive for Zachary is always awkward because it's always a second uh, two-hit KO. Only the Rebel GX would pick it up immediately. So we do see the reaction from Zachary. Just a, a calm nod. He's like, yeah, I'm, I was pretty certain that was what you were going to be going for. Both players, by this point, they know each other's lists. Both, in fact, are using Acerola and have been doing so with good effect to make it all the way to the final. Here is the Acerola being played from Tord. The um, looks like he's going for the Tapu Lele here. So I really like this play from him. He's going to promote it so he can go for an energy drive play instead because that too is the only way that Zachary can take a knockout with 170 HP. So again, he's trying to protect the Golisopod in any way possible. Yeah, 100 damage and Tord is picking up another Acerola, which could be huge for him into the hand with the prize cards while Zachary is promoting his own. On Tapu Lele GX. So, yeah, it does have free retreat, of course, because the gyro unit is online, so there's no reason to promote uh, or no reason to not re uh, promote it because he still has Max Elixirs available for all of his metal attackers, which may be a little bit more useful. It would take a lot to get a Celestina attacking this turn, so we do, in fact, see Zachary instead going to attach to his Type Null instead, and we see a Guzma play here. He's trying to target out this Golisopod, which is really interesting. Of course, the first impression attack does a lot less damage if it hasn't entered the field on that turn, or sorry, entered uh, from the bench into the active position. So, Zachary trying to stifle towards um, setup here. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what Zachary is going for. He could also always use the Ooh, GX wow. attack, and there it is. First two prize cards to Zachary. Sorry, the third prize card now to Zachary. Golisopod GX going down immediately, and now Todd's decision to see what he is promoting. So yeah, he does have that decision available. He could go back into that Tapu Lele. That looks like what he's going for because, again, we have to be concerned, or he has to be concerned, I should say, at the fighting memory at any moment. So the Tapu Lele now the safest target on his field as he does evolve up once again into that Zoroark GX. He has plenty of trades avail available to him. I think this turn, because he already has double colors energy established, uh, it might be an end play to lower Zachary's hand size that he's going to be looking for more than anything else. Yeah, and you can also see there's already a puzzle of time in Tord's hand, and you would imagine with a, a total of six new cards that he's able to see with the trade abilities, he would find a second puzzle there to give him access to all the cards in his discard pile. So Tord's deck really, really flexible as soon as those Zoroks come online.
So Tord going ahead straight away with that Wonder Tank ability for that last Tapu Lele. Now he doesn't have to worry about his own bench size usage, so straight away he goes for it <laughs> and simply flops the N on the board, saying, that's coming your way, my boy. Now, all the Ns that are being played later on, while both players have uh, already drawn a couple of prize cards, is always in favor of Tord, because he can always draw out no matter how few cards he's drawing out of the end. Zachary, however, he will have to find supporter cards. He will have to find Tapu Leles to get out of these few hand, situation, few hand cards situation. Yeah, so Zachary, he only plays one copy of Orangaroo. That's his means of getting his way out of end. That's not been established on the board as of yet. He has just drawn into a couple of big cards there. That's the first time he's caught eye of the fighting memory, and he's also got himself an Ultra Ball, so it looks like he won't be too heavily disrupted by this end here, so he's definitely still in the game. Yeah, of, of course, this fight, uh, fighting memory is the means that Zachary needs to pick up one-hit KOs on the Zorak GX that are weak to fighting, and Silvela that way uh, can make use of the weakness there. And for Tord now, he found another Glycipod GX and attached a Grass Energy to it. I think his hand was so strong, he was thinking, ooh, do I actually want to discard any of these cards with trade? <laughs> but yes, he is in the end opting to discard an Acerola. He does still, of course, have four whole copies of Puzzle of Time, so he can still access them, even though two of them have already hit the discard pile. So uh, we are going to see what else he drew into. He did get one of his four field blowers as well, so he can also get more trades online to re-establish his hand size. That is indeed a first world problem if your hand <laughs> is so good you don't want to even trade in one card <laughs> of these, but taught now making use of all the trades and has a huge hand. Yep, and he still has one trade available left to him, but instead he's going to go for the Enhanced Hammer now, throwing that on the board. Uh, Energy Drive still going to be dealing 60 damage, and that could help get the Sil Valley GX in range for future attacks, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to see here to round out Tord's turn. Sil Valley now 80 damage on it. Energy drive, there we go. And now Zachary, even though he has the fighting memory, is also forced to find another double colorless. So just checking his discard pile, maybe for the amount of double colors that are in there. One just got discarded by the Enhancer. It looks like two copies at least, maybe even three. I couldn't quite see it. So we see there is going to be a wonder tag from... Tapu Lele, that was actually his top deck, so he doesn't even need to discard the Silvalli with his Ultra Ball. This is even better for him, so he's going to be able to vo evolve up his bench and uh, also commit the Fighting Memory probably to the Genesect DX. We've already mentioned how helpful that ability can be, and he's going to be able to keep that resource for later whilst going for this Professor Sycamore. Really good turn for Zachary, even though he was end to a low hand size. Let's see, however, if he can grab himself one of those last double colorless energies. I think there's only one in there. If I yeah. saw correctly, there's only one double colorless left in the deck. I don't know how many cards are left in this deck, but at this point he has to go for it. Fighting memory, as you said, going down the Genesect EX, and let's see if he gets it. Ooh, it's a big few cards here. Let's see. <laughs> he's going one at a time, going slowly. Lots of basic oh, metal, but he's missed. Ooh, this is going to be a big turn here. He can use his uh, ability on the Genesect to recover that... Uh, fighting memory for later use, of course, because he knows how many uh, field blower Tord plays, and he would love to get rid of that at any moment. So, just going to be a basic energy attachment to his bench, Silvalli, the one without any damage. And Tord has a big break here. It is a big break for Tord, and you saw that sigh of relief there at the beginning of his turn. He got away there, and he knew exactly that. And now he can use again trade abilities to further uh, expand on his lead here. He is not in the lead in terms of prices, but his setup really looks good for him. So trade number two coming into play now. I think he drew into another enhanced hammer. He has puzzles of time available to him. Uh, it is going to be down to him to maybe retreat this Tapu Lele in order to get more damage on the Silver Ally, seeing so the active one isn't in range of an energy drive attack. And um, well, he has basically, with so many cards in his hand, he has the option of which attacker he wants to use in the first place. So he has plenty of options available. And that is really just the name of the game towards deck. He always has options options because his hand size is so expansive. Yeah, that makes it also the, the luck factor. He reduces the luck factor, which we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. The best uh, players in the world, of course, try to reduce the impact that luck has always in the game. And these trade abilities, of course, with all the cards that he can see in the late game, reduce the luck immensely. It looks like he's drawn into an N as well. He's now shoved two Puzzle of Times to the top of his hand. So it looks like he wants to be accessing his discard pile here, uh, potentially going for a couple of supporters, maybe a Guzma. It looks like he's going for Choice Band to increase his damage output so he can take a knockout on this Silver Ally. 
Yeah, there will be uh, currently 90 damage there coming from the energy drive if he attack with the Tapu Lele. That, of course, would not quite be enough, but he has access to other attacks and another double colorless, so he could choose to uh, retreat that Tapu Lele right mm -hmm. now. That looks like what he is going to be going for. He grabs himself a double colorless energy. He did commit a double colorless this turn to his Golisopod GX, and he's thinking, is it worth me going for the end here? And yes, I think he's thinking about it. <laughs> and uh, yep, he's going to play the end. Again, trying to throw Zachary down to a lower hand size because even though he did whiff on the double colors energy, he still had, uh, I think, six playable cards remaining, and Tord wants to deny that at any cost. Yeah, and Tord's end from last turn was exactly what got him the break uh, this turn. Zachary found himself a way to, got, uh, to get a Professor Sigma, but at the same time, he was limited to three cards to begin with. This is exactly what happened after Tord played his end, and of course, Zachary wasn't able to attack, so Tord is trying to repeat this. So, yes, we are going to see both players cutting their decks. Tor going to be able to draw four cards, Zachary just the three. Looks like, ooh, he got himself a Guzma, but I don't think there was any basic energy in his hand, and it doesn't look like he has many options. So, Tord really start, uh, starting to take control here as he retreats his Tapu Lele GX, and uh, he has the option to attack with his Golisopod, which he is going to use. It looks like the first impression here to take the knockout in combination with that choice band to go down to two prizes remaining. He still has the crossing cut GX attack available to him for future turns, so he really is starting to take a squeeze on this game. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell if it was a armor press or the first impression. I would imagine he would go for the armor press in this case to reduce by 20 damage. So he picked up the KO anyway and he has two prize cards remaining only. And Zachary now, he found the fighting uh, memory and also a way to power up that Sylvalai. So finally he gets one of those one-hit KOs on the Zorak. It was a really big pickup from him. Before that top deck, he didn't have any... Uh, metal energy so uh, now it's just down to Tord can he grab himself a Guzma and, and that's there exactly it is. what he gets straight away the Tapu Lele using the Guzma of course he still had his own GX attack available to him there was a choice pandered uh, Golisopod ready to go and uh, he could have picked off um, well he had his choice of attacker <laughs> really that he wanted to pick off on uh, Zachary's bench there yeah players take note this is exactly how it works so Tapu Lele Guzma, extend the hand, <laughs> pick up the last prize cards, win game number one. So Todd ahead in this final match that we have for you today. So he is only one game away of becoming your international champion. And he would do what no player before has been able to do, win two consecutive international championships in a row. Trying to make history here, Todd Reklev. He is a veteran of the game. He's won many national championships. He's done well at consistently at every international event not least the one where he won over in Indianapolis but yeah to do it two times is just absolutely absurd it is absurd and also we've heard from him in several interviews how how uh, confident he is that the choice that of the deck that he took mm -hmm. would go all the way into the finals he even shared it with all of his friends and these friends did very well also in day two also in day one and we can see how uh, really consistent this deck is now it's really just one game away uh, from uh, taking the crown. If you are Zachary now though, you still have some comfort. There's lots that you can do to get back into this game. You have yourself still those fighting memory cards. They didn't come out quick enough really. I think it's going to be on Zachary to really try and keep the pressure going and deny Tord all that hand advantage. He was never able to get a turn where he had both the power memory and the Guzma to start taking down those Zoroark as well. So it's really still in his hands to bring this game back and it's no means over for him. No, not at all. I think he was only down one prize cut in the end and it could come down to that one turn where Todd was able to use that end and disrupt uh, Zachary uh, enough to not be able to attack that turn. And that would be the turn where Zachary would have begun in front in prize cards. Todd denied that with the ends and then got away with the game. And he definitely did have that really painful ultra ball right at the start of the game where he got rid of not only a max elixir but also a physical copy of double colors energy. It made sense because he wanted to guarantee himself the Silvalli GX to guarantee pressure on that Tapu Lele, uh, sorry, on the Tapu Coco because if you let that just keep racking up flying flips, it's going to be awkward for you no matter what. So he had to guarantee himself the Silvalli. But looking back at that, it was definitely a painful discard in the first game. Yeah, Zachary knows he got very close there. So uh, no need to overthink here that your strategy uh, would have to be readjusted or so. Zachary knows exactly what he needs to do. He's also a veteran to the, uh, to the game. We know his play ID is only four <laughs> digit, so he knows exactly how it feels like to be in a final like this. And of course, he wants to take this one down. Handshake and liftoff for the second game of this best of three. 
and final for the Silas Steeler here, Zachary on the left hand side and Wimpard on Todd's side. Looks like he's found himself a Silas Steeler GX here. He actually opts to attach a basic energy instead of discarding it with the Professor Sycamore here. Still a painful one, getting rid of his rescue stretcher, of which he plays one copy, and also one of his three Silver Ally GX. So pretty awkward discard from the off here, but he has benefited from that. He's got himself two type nulls. Yeah, another painful Professor Sycamore to begin with is Zachary. Uh, fortunately for him, he found a couple of more basic uh, Pokemon that he can evolve into Silver Ally GX next turn. And now let's see what Tort can, ha can do in the first turn. I think there are two Enhanced Hammer. This, this looks like a very bad hand. Actually, there's a Mellow, so this could save him next turn, but the, the first turn is going to be very awkward. Yeah, this doesn't look great for Todd at all. He is going to have to just go for the Mallow here. He's going to have to hope that Wimpod can uh, survive a hit with just its 70 hit points. We know Zachary does have Max Elixirs in his deck, and um, I know that that Type Null does have a secondary attack that could be able to get the knockout on this Wimpod here, so... Uh, he said it so many times. If he has that Bridget, this is why he plays three copies. He has it just so he can always guarantee it on the first turn. And this is a window for him to not win the game. This hurts just so much uh, because Celestila, of course, the rocket fall, it already has a metal energy mm -hmm. attached to it with free retreat costs on the <laughs> win pod. This would be enough to pick up the KO. A double colors energy wins Zachary the game. This could be an absolutely incredible turnaround for Zachary, leaving him with you know around 50 minutes to <laughs> conclude the final <laughs> game. Uh, so this is going to be incredible here. Just the mallow for two targets Todd knows how bad this is going to be for him I think he just put two Bridgets to the top because he knew that uh, if I'm going to take one Bridget I'm going to use it anyway and shuffle my deck regardless <laughs> yeah just in case I got the uh, order wrong it's going to be a Bridget no matter what so he wants to make sure that is going to be a Bridget but it's really up to Zachary if he lets Todd get access to those Bridgets let's see it so all Todd can do is simply pass it over I believe um, I think that's it there's going energy. to be a grass energy attachment and Todd has uh -oh. nothing else to do. That's a pass. Let's see it. Zachary he has himself the Professor Sycamore. He can dig as hard as he can to try and find this. He can also use Tapu Lele. Using that Wonder Tag, he can thin one more supporter from his hand as well. So it's almost like an eight-card dig if he opts to grab himself um, the Tapu Lele first to discard an extra supporter that he doesn't need at this point uh, because he just needs one of those uh, four copies of Double Colors Energy remaining to him. Yeah, he doesn't need the Bridget. That's exactly what he is going for. In his prize cards, there are only two basic metal energy. So he has the access to four double colors energy. Can he find them with this big Professor Sycamore right now? We're going to see the attachment of the choice band, Zachary, making sure that if he doesn't hit this, Let's he see still it. has options. But this is a big seven cards. Max Elixir into Max Elixir. He's nervous. There's a Guzma. He's going one at a time as well, just for the suspense of the crowd. Todd already. There it is. There it the is. Last card. Last card. Wow. Zachary gets to the second game here with the double colors on the last card of the Professor Sycamore. What a game. That is absolutely incredible. And just like that, Zachary is straight back in it. Oh, yeah, you have to be like, oh, this is so painful if you are taught, of course. I mean, he plays three copies of Bridget. He plays <sighs> Tapu Lele. He plays Ultra Ball. Nothing. None of these cards were in his opening cards, in his opening hand. He wasn't able to find a second basic Pokemon, which he plays loads of. And Zachary... Pulling it off, he took advantage of the situation, and now it's one and one. Now it's again everyone's game. Anyone's game once again, and Todd, at the very least, he's going to be able to start the game this time. So <laughs> hopefully, he can see a fresh new seven cards and actually have some basic Pokemon to play with. We've always said that it's turn two when his deck gets started. The trades get online, and the rest of the deck starts flowing beautifully. But he has had a few games. We've already seen a couple of games on stream where um, he's just not had anything on the first turn, and he's just had to do nothing and pass, and it puts him into these awkward situations. So right now going through his head he is just hoping to see that turn one supporter yeah if you're in this situation all that is also going through your head is this can happen when i'm playing my mom this can happen <laughs> when i'm playing my brother right i don't care about that i let them win once in a while right but if i'm set up i don't lose anymore this is the final match of the weekend this is the final match of an international championships why is this happening to me <laughs> do you play against your mom a lot julia uh, well, I taught her Pokemon, but uh, she was way better than me after I taught it to her, so I uh, figured I wasn't playing her anymore. So now you just say you let her win. That's the <laughs> exactly. line you stick to. So fantastic stuff. We're going to see both players shuffling up and uh, keeping their heads down at this point. Lots of emotion going on. They've got to remain calm here. It was a quick win from Zachary, but he knows that he still has the means to win in a long game situation. It's nothing short of a very close matchup. So both players not going to be all about the turn one here. There's plenty of players left in this game both having answers to either's deck yeah focus brief it's as if nothing has happened <sighs> it's just the best of one 
game from here on now. It's, it doesn't matter what happened in the second game. That There's nothing Todd could do about it. He just has to focus and now understand how he wins this third and all decisive game. Looks like Zachary doesn't have any basic Pokemon, so he's just holding on to a bunch of energy cards, waiting to see if Tord has got any basics in his opening hand. He, of course, has to select a, an active Pokemon before the Mulligan is shown. So Tord's going to get himself an extra card here. That could be a big decisive card if he doesn't already have anything going on. Yep, as we can see, Tord is setting up his prize cards. We see Tapu Koko, we see a Zorua, we see a Golisipod GX, also a double colorless in there. So this is something that he has to watch out for as it's not available to him immediately as there is a mulligan going on on Zachary's side here. Yep, nothing too painful in his prize cards as we see Zachary now. He's got himself an Orangaroo. One of the best things about this Silvalli GX deck is you have all these otherwise really awkward retreat Pokemon, but as long as you get yourself a Bridget or at least just one copy of Type Null, you don't really mind whatever you start with, so just any basic Pokemon will do. That's right, and he also places uh, prize cards there. Now liftoff for the final game in the trading card game, 2018 International Championships here in London. Oranguru for Zachary and Wimpart for Todd. And uh, Tord does have himself a Tapu Lele GX, so he is going to be able to grab himself a Bridget on the first turn, which is so often what he goes for. He is also eyeing up a couple of basic Pokemon already in his hand, I think, so he has a potential for lots of different supporters here. I could imagine that both players would agree that they could just start the game with both having played a Bridget already, <laughs> <laughs> just to reduce the luck factor. And Tord is luckily uh, enough to have found himself the copy of Bridget that he needs. And he's put it right to the top of his deck. I think it already was right there where he needs to grab it, and he's going to again look through to see what is prized it's always an essential element of the pokemon trading card game he does play four copies of some interesting cards like the puzzle of times he wants to keep track of enhanced hammer so important in this matchup even the mind jack zoroark as well that's something a one-off that he wants to keep an eye on and uh, on top of that he's also got all of his zoroark gx double colorless energies plenty of things he needs to keep track of throughout this game yeah, a little bit painful for him is that the Tapu Koko is actually in the prize cards mm -hmm. because that would enable him to retreat via the Wimp Out ability and have something ap active that doesn't have any retreat cost. But that option is not available to him. He would need to find something like, for example, a Floatstone or so. Uh, but uh, I don't think he's playing any of these copies. So uh, he will have to uh, yeah, deal with maybe even a Wimp Out active or maybe Tapu Lele or Zora. Yeah, just a little bit awkward for him. So often we see the Wimp Out ability. Tools actually started with Wimp Out so often. It's great. He plays only three copies but such an amazing starter for him just for that Wimpod ability you could go into Tapu Koko not an option here so he's going to go ahead and grab himself another Wimpod as well as two Zerua it looks like filling up his bench and uh, he may even remain active with his Wimpod depending on what his hand looks like and force himself into Guzmaring on turn two yeah, we shall see. We didn't get a good look at his hand as he's double-checking his deck. Really, he doesn't want to do any mistake. He needs all the information that he and his, uh, his brain can uh, absorb <laughs> at this point. And he says, okay, I'm fine. I, I got this. I think I can remember everything. Yeah, he's really good at that robotic, in fact, that he is able to analyze his prize cards after looking at it. It is, you know, on the first turn, you have lots of time. You get a little bit of leeway to look through your deck. That's just something commonly known. On the first turn of the game, you're allowed to look through and see what is prized and toward taking advantage of that as uh, he is going to finally complete his Bridget and uh, we'll see if he wants to retreat into any Pokemon or not. I think he's already got another Zerua. That's exactly why uh, he puts that down here and he does in fact retreat with that ability into a Zerua and I think that's going to be his last action of his turn here. Yeah, still didn't uh, quite see what he has in hand, but there we go. The supporter for the turn is playing. And now let's see what Zachary can do here. Another painful Professor Sycamore right Ooh, away. Three of his Professor Sycamores all gone in his opening hand. He did get one basic Metal Energy in there. Let's see if he can get any of the other basic Pokemon. Oh! Gets himself an Ultra Ball at the final hurdle. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. We were about to see another response one-hit KO in turn two here, but... Whew, he can breathe a sigh of release right, for, right at the very end there. He gets himself Ultra Ball, which keeps him alive in this game. Again, the last card that is saving Zachary here from losing the game altogether immediately. So now <laughs> there's an Ultra Ball. This card is Guzma and the basic and Meta Energy. There was also a Max Elixir. So whatever he's benching, he can hopefully uh, power it up with that Max Elixir immediately. Looks like he's going for something with a lot of hit points, buying him a lot of turns <laughs> if he has nowhere else to go with his hand. I think he does, as you said, he's got Max Elixir in here, so he can start accelerating to this Celesteela GX. So this is going to be pretty nice for him.
him. He's assuming that Tord will do the work for him in moving this Orangaroo, seeing as though it does have 120 hit points. That's perfect numbers for currently Tord if he's able to find himself a double colors energy and a Zoroark GX. So he's thinking, you know what, the Orangaroo probably going to go down. I may as well just start committing into my Celesteela for a response here. Yeah, I think he drew also in a couple of other energy cards, but mm -hmm. did he have other means to draw after this turn? I'm not sure what else he has going on. Uh, he's already... Oh, ah, there's an N in there. That could be a great way to sort of stabilize him in the game as we are going to see the Metal Energy get attached to that Celesteela and instruct for one card is pretty nice for him. It gets himself a Kartana GX. That could also be helpful next turn and uh, he's simply going to have to pass it over to Tord here. Yeah, he would have loved to have uh, Type Null on his bench mm -hmm. so that he could move something next turn if it's not knocked out the Orin Guru, for example. Doesn't get it, so it's kind of an awkward start for here as Todd finds his first Zorak GX. Yep, and he already has Double Colors Energy in hand, so he'll be guaranteeing the knockout on the Orangaroo if he wants it. However, he could be trading right now, trying to get the first hit on the Celesteela. And another Wimpod being discarded, another Zorak GX, so <laughs> now the full army is here. It's turn two, it's the perfect turn two up to this point for Todd. Wow. Amazing. Yep, three Zorak GX down on turn two. And he has one more trade available to him. Can he access a Guzma here? He may not even be going for it. He may just be trying to get as large of a hand size as possible. It's not a bad thing that he's still just taking the one prize on the Orangaru. It's a great Pokemon to take out, even though um, it's just the one prize. So it looks like there wasn't any Guzma. He just drew into an Acerola and a Mewtwo. That Acerola could actually be really important if Zachary can't find himself a choice band because uh, the GX attack from Celesteela only does 180 damage at maximum. So there's going to be the double colors energy for Zoroark and he's going to be content with a riotous beating here. Yeah, Todd is trying to run away with this game. I think he sees exactly what's happening. Zachary not being lucky with the setup here. All that is left on the field is a Celesteela right now as Todd is picking up a prize card, which was a Golisipod GX. Ooh, it's and a big now draw. Zachary has to find something and there we go. We get rid of the double colors energy with Cortana a choice band and an N. Here we go for Zachary. This could be huge. If he gets himself a double colorless energy from this N, he could be going for a Blaster GX attack this turn to flip over his prize cards. It does 180 base damage, and he got that choice band off the top of his deck. So he used the Kartana just to be safe. It's also something that now he can't draw into. Uh, so if he does whiff on the double colorless energy, he at least uh, won't be responded on immediately. The Celeste Healer, such a tanky basic Pokemon. 200 hit points is absurd. And uh, let's see. Again, it's down to what he can draw off of this N. Ooh, he's always got it on the last card, but not this time. It looks like just a basic metal energy might have to be content with a rocket fall here for a two-hit knockout on the Zoroark. Yeah, so this time, unfortunately for Zachary, unlucky. And I think he didn't find a... Uh, type null uh, either. There is an mm -hmm. ultra ball so he could go for it but at the same time then there's nothing left in his hand so he decides against using it. There's a max elixir. Now he finds <laughs> a double colorless. Oh. oh, he got it in the wrong order. He got the basic energy from <laughs> the end and then the double colors energy taunting him with the max elixir which failed him. Not very good for him. He's not had good luck with his max elixirs in this final. No, not at all. And the rocket fall with only two retreat costs on the Zorak is dealing 120 damage mm -hmm. together with that choice band. So far from ideal for him, but he's taking that route now. I know that Todd already has the Acerola in his hand as well, so even before he starts trading, as long as he can find himself energy cards, any energy will do at this point. He can get either Grass or Double Colorless, seeing as though he has a Golisopod already set up. He's going to be able to simply, again, wipe away this damage. Yeah, for Todd, he has everything in hand. All the supporters that are in his deck, he can do everything. Or now even a Zorak GX for the trade. So he can even do that. He can go for a Guzma. He can go for an Acerola. He has an N in hand. He can do everything. But I think Acerola is what he's going for. So one last trade. Can he draw into basic energy? That's exa Or any energy, I should say. So that he can pull off the awesome Acerola play. If he's not able to, I'm not even sure if he has any draw supporters in his hand. He's all in on this trade here. So it's a big two cards for him. Whether or not he can... Uh, get a response attack at all here, uh, let alone trying to remove some of this damage. Yeah, his bench is completely full, so there's not going to be a tapo later. So let's see. <gasps> Puzzle Ooh, of damage, double colors on the last, last card. card. Last card. So he's going to get the optimal turn here. He can go for the Acerola, preserving his Zoroark, removing that damage. And he has, once again, his choice of attacker. Does he go into Zoroark GX, expecting a Blaster GX from Zachary in the following turn? Or does he go into the Tapu Lele again, trying to go for a big energy drive here? First of all, let me evolve this Wimpod real quick. So it's the <laughs> perfect bench right there for Todd. Only one more Zorak GX could have made it any better. So three trade abilities and two uh, Golisipod GX ready to attack. Double colorless in hand. What is Todd going to do with it? So yeah, he is just assessing all the different options here. He is going to go for the Acerola play. 
picking up that Zorak GX, healing it fully in effect, and he's actually going to opt to go for... Ooh, he's double-thinking it. There it is. He's going to go for a Zorak GX, promoting that, re-benching the Zerua, attaching that double colors energy. Such an important last draw from him. And again, we're going to see 120 damage from this Riotous Beating. Yeah, if he hasn't gotten that double colors energy from the last trade, he would have had to use the N to try and dig for it. This way, he was able to use the Acerol and deny the prize card. Ooh, it's a nice Bridget from Zachary, but it might be a little bit slow. He does still require some energy in order to get the Blaster GX knockout, which has got to be what he's looking for this turn. So instead, going to discard that alongside a Registeel. It also feels a little bit late in the game to start using that card, seeing as though it only does 30 damage. So we are instead going to see the w uh, sorry, the Ultra Ball finding himself, Tapu Lele. So there is one more Wonder Tag, and once again, he's going to end refreshing his hand to six. I think all of the Professor Sycamore are gone by now for him, <laughs> yeah. so N is the only option. That's fine. He is preserving some of his resources this way and he needs some energy right now to make the Blaster GX happen and picking up the first two prize cards on his side. Yeah, ideally here he gets himself some Type Null. I know he has one Max Elixir remaining as well. That would also be incredible if he was able to find that. But the priority right now is finding one more energy for the Sorok GX because it's just so easy for Tord, especially even with the Acerola in the discard pile, it's actually easier for him to access because not only are physical copies of Acerola useful to him, but also it now opens up Puzzle of Time to be an option. So let's see what he can do off of his own six cards here. Double colorless energy, no type null, though he does have an Ultra Ball, so not too shabby overall. Yeah, double colorless again, he would have loved to have just the basic metal energy potentially to be able to use the Blaster Jacks. The double color is not really necessary at this point. He goes for the Ultra Boy, Acerola and Delmise, and there's the type null you mentioned. Here it is. There is the type null. He's got to start getting that online. Is he going to potentially go for the rocket fall here again, expecting a two-hit KO, starting to set up the Sil Valley for a longer game approach? Or is he going to go for the knockout? Yeah, it looks like he's going a little bit more conservative. It opens up the door for Tord once again to find himself in it self an acer roller. But I think overall, for the longevity of this game, he's not going to get enough done if he just commits everything to the Celesteela. Yeah, and Tord uh, also found an enhanced hammer, so that double colors energy oh, is going wow. to go very soon. If Tord is finding another Acer Roller, again, there won't be any prize cards <laughs> for Zachary next turn. Double colorless goes, and now Tord has a couple of trade abilities to find <laughs> the next Acer Roller. This is a huge turn from Tord. He's still got two trades available to him, and uh, I think he also has. Well, oh, is it in hand already? Another. Oh my goodness, there's an N in his hand. There's a double colorless also in there. He's going to trade first an N away going to grab himself Ultra Ball and it uh, looks like Tapu Lele GX so if he needs to trade even more he does have the option too and uh, he's going to look like Tapu Lele not doing too much good here with a full bench right now he's also going to uh, use that second trade the only one that he has available remaining right now and let's see what he can get there's a Grass Energy and also a Guzma not too fabulous for him it depends what was already in his hand though yeah, and remember the Zorak GX that he recovered with the Acer Roller was shuffled back in with the end, so he doesn't have access to it immediately. If he had an Ultra Ball, he could look for it oh, now. Wow. But there, I think, is there the is. Acer Roller right in the window, so he can use it, and I think he does it. Yeah, you think every time he's got to be going for the Acer Roller here. It's such a strong play. Again, he's already put a Zerua down last turn, so he can put down another Zorak and even gain more draws once again. He's opting to go into the uh, Golisopod as well. He does have a Grass Energy. He was able to draw that off one of his trades. And uh, here he's setting up even more. A first impression dealing 120 to finish off the Celesteela. And once again, he still has a trade available to him, seeing as though that's been freshly benched. And let's see if he can get any more hand advantage. He's eyeing up what to discard here. Always so medi uh, meticulous with his decision making here. A Todd is about to draw two more prize cards. He's just running away with this game. His setup is so good. He has all the answers. He can always trade into the answer because he doesn't have them at the beginning of the turn <laughs> and Zachary is still struggling because at the end of this turn he won't have any energy on his field whatsoever. Yeah, it's going to be really, really awkward for Zachary. The one thing he does have available to him, it's going to need to be a big turn. It's going to require something like double colorless energy and max elixir. You see, he's going to promote the Kartana. It will have free retreat if he gets himself a type null. It looks like he drew into double colorless energy and the type null here. Seeing as though he's just evolved, it means that max elixir no longer an out. So he definitely won't be attacking this turn. Um, but, well, potentially with something like Tapu Lele, but I think it's not the strongest of plays. He's going to have to hope to set up for a turn and leave something in the active to tank a hit here. 
Yeah, he has to put some damage on the field, but at the same time, if he does, there's always an Acer Roller coming from Tord. Tord mm -hmm. played two Acer Rollers so far. There's one more on the deck, and there are four puzzles of time which he hasn't <laughs> used yet. <laughs> Zachary, again, opting to go for the end at every opportunity. He used a Wonder Tag ability to get that. He is running out of his own supporter cards at this point as well, seeing as though he had such a painful Professor Sycamore at the beginning of the game. Uh, so we did see the commitment of Double Colorless to his Silver Ally GX. And uh, we'll see if this N will slow down Tord or not to Zorak GX currently on his board. So even though it's three cards physically, that can add up to way more. Yeah, remember, even though it's 1-1, Zachary in every single game so far had a very painful Professor Sycamore in turn number one. He was able to recover from it one time. Can he do it one more? So let's see what he can get off these six cards. He did draw into a Max Elixir. He's also got the Power Memory as well. So pretty nice hand for him. He can hopefully establish some more attackers here. I think to be safe, he may have to freely retreat into the Celesteela um, so that he's not open to Tord using a GX attack. And that's exactly what he's going to go for. And he's simply going to pass it over to Tord here, requiring now uh, the combination of a Choice Band, Double Colorless, and a Guzma if he wants to take a knockout via Crossing Cut. Um, but he may settle for simply a Guzma on its own to start targeting the Silver Ally once again. Yeah, and immediately in Todd's starting hand, there was a Zorak GX, so there again, free trades. There's a Tapulele, which is immediately a target for a trade. There we go. Uh, go down it goes. There's a Puzzle of Time and another Double Colorless, so even more options for Todd. It's actually a little bit awkward for him. He wants to keep all of these cards. I think at this point, he may just have to get rid of the Grass Energy, um, but at the same time, even Double Colorless may be in the firing line at this point. It looks like he's going to get rid of the Choice Band, so He's not going to eye up the crossing cut this turn, it looks like. Uh, drew into a couple more cards that are more easily burnable, the Ultra Ball and the uh, Field Blower. So he's going to get one more trade in here. And uh, he gets himself a double colorless, so potentially just having to settle for an armor press here. For once, he missed something. Yeah, for once he's not able also to pick up a prize card this turn. So double colorless can be attached to the Golisipar GX armor press. Would also reduce the damage by 20 during the next turn. And Zachary finally gets a break. Yeah, this is actually really big. If Zachary was ever to, going to get back into this game, it would have taken a turn similar to this. And Tord may think, you know what, even Armor Press isn't that useful to me uh, unless I can pick it up later. So yeah, he may just be happy with, well, not too happy, but he may have to settle for just a 30 damage first impression. So he has the GX attack option available to him to maybe uh, finish off the game later on. So that's why we see him committing the Grass Energy to the bench Golisopod GX instead. Yeah, still thinking about what else he can do with this turn, but I think he settles for the attack with the first impression. That's only 30 damage, and Zachary now, let's see if he can make something out of the situation. So he does have lots of basic metal energy, both in his hand and discard piles, so um, there's the option to potentially go for um, some energy acceleration once again from him, but we've seen so often that Tord is able to undo damage that he does put on the board, so there is the GX attack still available for Zachary, um, so maybe he could be going for a big two prizes here with his GX attack and hoping that from there he can use maybe some fighting memories to get back uh, one-hit KOs using Turbo Drive later on in the game. Yeah, Rescue Stretcher gets back another Celesteela. He always uh, also benches it. He's eyeing out that Max Elixir, just checking his disc up at how many uh, basic energy he has run through. So let's see if he can finally hit there one there for go. once. There we go. <laughs> so that's what the card does. It allows you, if you find a basic energy in the top six cards, you're able to attach it to one of your basic Pokemon. I never knew that because it's never happened for Zachary just yeah, yet. I thought he was just discarding a card. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So he is setting up the Celesteela GX, of course. And um, now he does have freedom of movement, of course, with that gyro unit ability. So fantastic. It's such a great option for the deck. It gives you so many deck slots, many decks having to opt to play a really high Guzma count in addition to a high Floatstone count. But you get away with it thanks to that amazing ability here. And Zachary looks like he was going towards the uh, GX marker, but instead he's being a little bit more cautious once again, going for the turbo drive for 120 here. Yeah, now he accelerates and gets some more energy back onto the field. And now Todd is trying to make more out of this turn than a first impression in 30 damage. He's not <laughs> going to settle for that for uh, any time longer. And there's an ultra ball for a Bridget and an enhanced hammer. Ooh, Enhanced Hammer could be big once again. There's going to be a Bridget getting discarded by a second trade. He's now drawn into Guzma here. He could potentially combine an Enhanced Hammer turn with a Guzma GX attack play with his other Golisopod that's currently on the bench. I think he has all the pieces to do that. He would go down to one prize card, which is a little bit awkward. 
or he could simply use the Guzma uh, to start targeting the Celesteela that now has a few energy on it. Again, trying to target as many attackers as possible to keep the pressure on Zachary in every opportunity. Yeah, as it stands, Todd will have to play the seven price game, as we call it, mm -hmm. as you have to knock out two more Pokemon GX or EX on Zachary's field uh, to pick up the game here. He has three prize cards left, so together with he has the Enhanced Hammer, a Guzma Energy X attack, he would go down to one prize card. Yep, there is the Enhanced Hammer, so that sort of does give us a telltale sign that he will be going for um, a Guzma play here. He does have puzzles available. He could actually instead go for a uh, Nasa Roto play once again, um, so that he then can move this Glycopod in his active position, healing it off once again. And uh, <laughs> at that point, he would uh, still be getting two hit KOs himself on this Sil Valley and making it very awkward for Zachary because, of course, the Gyro unit only works for basic Pokemon, so he could try and force really awkward discards next turn. You can see Todd taking his time here. So there's so much information available to him now. So all, mm -hmm. the, all the decisions, of course, take uh, much longer. At the beginning of a game, uh, the situations are very similar to each other um, compared to other matches. And now he really has to focus on what is the right thing to do now. What will make me the champion here of the 2018 International Championships in London? And he decides that a double colorless uh, attached to the Glacipod GX on the bench is one path towards that goal. And he is going to go for the Guzma, trying to target this Celestial. Uh, it was a close one. He had the puzzles available to access Acerola. I think that could, al could also have been a fine play, but he's just in such a powerful spot. He's keeping those puzzles of time for the flexibility for future turns while he can go for the first impression here or the armor press, whichever he prefers. Armor press doing enough to two hit KO regardless, so he may as well get that extra reduction of damage going back over to Zachary. Armor press it is, and now for Zachary. He's lost his double colorless energy last turn. He's investing another one into the Silvalli GX. So still, the uh, Silvalli's G, uh, GX attack is always an option to Zachary. He still has his GX counter uh, marker available to him. He retreats, and now let's see what kind of attack he's going for. Uh, he is holding on to a field blower as well. Not going to be too useful to him. Looks like there's not much going else, uh, not much else going on in his hand. So he may be forced into a Rebel GX attack here just to keep up in the prize trade. And that is exactly what we're going to see. He's tired of doing the two hit KOs. He wants to start taking some prizes. There we go. Uh, Zachary going down to four prize cards now. And Todd thinking about what to do. That Silvalli GX is still very much healthy. Just used its Rebel GX attack. And Todd, yeah. Todd now f maybe in a situation where... He is, hasn't expected to be in in this game because he was uh, in a very good position. But now Todd really has to think about how he can come back from this and how he can draw the last three prize cards. I think Todd's going to look to go for a Guzma into Guzma play. I think this turn he's going to be looking to maybe pick up that Celesteela for a knockout and then keep the Glycopod GX attack around the following turn to then pick off either the Kartana or the Tapu Lele GX. I think this will be the line he's going for. He's going to first trade away a few cards, as we often see. He has the Puzzles of Time available to him. He has double colorless energy. He has Guzma already there, so he could start setting this up now and start using the double puzzles um, to increase his outs, expecting more ends via Zachary. But he's already played a large amount of ends, and I don't think Zachary even has the option in the following turn. So here we see the first pair of puzzles. He is going to grab himself the Enhanced Hammer. So I think he's going to just go for the combination that he did last turn where he goes for the Guzma play whilst also taking energy off his active Pokemon. Yeah, that's a good point. So Tord uh, realizes that this could be the second last turn of the game. So he could seal this one up with two more Guzmas here if he plays the cards correctly. So an enhanced hammer is the first option here for the Silvalli GX, double colorless energy. What is the second target here for it? It's another double colorless. Yeah, so I think uh, now he has two currently in his hand so he can attach one to a Zoroark GX, but also it means he can attach a second one to his Glycopod on the following turn. So here is going to be that Enhanced Hammer. So painful um, in so many matchups, but here specifically, there's already been a lot of double colors energy spent by Zachary, and uh, we are going to see Todd. He actually has an Ace of Roller here, so once oh. again, he's going for a different play, more conservative, not trying to dig too aggressively for prizes. Instead, he's just going to keep targeting these attackers. Yeah, and now that the GX marker is turned over from Zachary, it's going to be very tough for Zachary to pick up one-hit KOs. The fighting memory would be something that would enable him to do so, at least on Zorak GX. And Tord, again, this case, going for the defensive road here. 
I think he's he's in the mindset that it might be really rare that Zachary has a combination of a double colorless plus a power a, a fighting memory and a Guzma all in his hand. I think he's thinking it's so unlikely that I'm safest just bringing in my Tapu Lele. It's difficult to knock out. It may force the Celesteela back into the active, but that's also awkward because Silvalli has a two retreat cost itself. He's still in a really good spot here, even though he didn't go aggressively for the Guzma. He's putting himself in a more likely position to win just by dealing with attackers each turn. You yeah, know, both players in a situation where they are kind of waiting on uh, the big punch from either player. <laughs> uh, we see Zachary has run through uh, quite a couple of double colors energy, so I'm not really sure how many are discarded. There are no in the price, but I think there's just one copy left. And he would have to dig if he wanted to keep attacking with that Savella Jax and not get into a position like we've seen uh, the last time. Or Guzma will of course also help and get out of the active spot. So it looks like the response from Zachary might be his own Acerola. We've seen it used so often by Tord for devastating effect. And uh, Zachary once again looking at his own discard pile to see whether or not this is the correct option. He is going to use this in order to move his Sylvalai and also gain that basic energy attachment back. He's going to re-promote his Celesteela. He can re-bench the Type Null. He has now basic energy from that Sylvalai and uh, he also does attach that to his Celesteela. Choice Man goes back onto the Sylv the uh, Type Null, which is actually really interesting because now that he's commit that, um, he can't use his fighting memory on Zoroark's on future turns, but he is holding on to Field Blower at the very least. That's right, Type Null does not have the ability that Genesect EX is featuring, and a Rocket Fall, so free Metal Energy only dealing 60 damage. That's not a nice investment, but there's nothing else to do for Zachary at this point, while Tort is... Uh, Benching another Golisipod GX here, running through his discard pile, uh, pile one more time. Remember, he has those puzzle of time. He has access to those. He has the trade ability. Yeah, this looking really strong. I think this turn it's going to be an easy Guzma on the Type Null that's just been rebenched by Zachary. It would then put Tord at two prize cards, so a Guzma play has to be what we're seeing here. Most likely from the Golisopod attaching a grass and he's going for first impression. As we see Tord counting his deck furiously, going as thin as possible, trying to thin every single card that he doesn't need. He still has plenty of Guzmas available to him, lots of energy as well, and that's all he needs over the next couple of turns. Yeah, we're going into the end stage. You know, if Tord is thinning out his deck so fast, he knows that he has to win in the next couple of turns and Guzma and double color this energy is what is going to get him there so also or either you could also go for a grass energy and a first impression attack to pick up that KO on the bench type no we're just waiting for that Guzma and there we have confirmation is. there it is <laughs> he's going to go down to two prize cards which means really Zachary only has that one attacker set up and it's heavily damaged he's already used a large portion I think all of his max elixirs as well so he's really taking control of this game with impressive Guzma play yeah, and he still has a huge hand size. So, so many cards there. Another card, it's a Zorua coming out of the price cards there. And Zachary knows I might have free metal energy attached to my Seller Steel, but do I really want to keep this active? This is almost like giving up the game. And what's even more awkward is that all of his Pokemon have at least some amount of retreat cost. He was using that Seal Valley to move between his attackers freely, so it's very awkward that um, he has to promote the Tapu Lele here toward in range with those final two prizes if he still uses his crossing cut GX attack in combination with a choice band of course that's got to be what he's looking for and just any uh, form of Guzma could finish off that heavily damaged Celesteela if Zachary can't change this situation. Yeah, and Todd is anxiously looking on. Is this it? Is this the last turn that I will be watching Zachary trying to make some sort of comeback here? Or do I have this? Will I be the champion <sighs> that will make the record-setting second title of the international <laughs> championships. There's no ends remaining for Zachary. He had to go ahead and use the Wonder Tag to find himself a Professor Sycamore here. I think that should just about wrap things up here. Let's see if Zachary can pull out anything else to change this state of the game. I think Tord has all the answers currently in his hand to finish off um, the final two prizes here. Yeah, there's no disruption coming from Zachary anymore. There's just an energy attachment. Now it's up for Todd. He's drawing. <laughs> he's he's drawing kind of, if he's nodding like this, this is usually it. There the it Guzma. is. The Guzma on the Celesteela. And Todd Reklev has done it two times international champion, breaking history this weekend. You all have seen history being made with Todd Reklev claiming the 2018 European International Champion title.